why are people leaving now? And, and, and often the reason why they're leaving is they're being overlooked. They're, they're, they're feeling like they're not being included in, in a decision uh, for a, a promotion. They're feeling like they, they, they weren't fairly considered as part of selection process uh, to, uh, to get the role they wanted or they haven't been invested in. And, and the point here is this matters because these are really good people that in the organization you've made the move of hiring and growing. And at some point they go because they don't feel that they've had a chance. And, and, and what's going on for them to be filtered out or feeling like they've been left out is the fact that we as human beings have biases. That we've got part of our brain that is the frontal cortex part, and that's in his model, uh, but that's basically when we're applying ourselves and we're purposefully having a framework, making a decision, it's an informed decision, we challenge each other and we think hard and we make sure that we make a right decision. And that's usually when we make rational decisions, when we're stressed about making sure we, we, we challenge each other and there's debate going on uh, around the room. And, and if you think about uh, uh, succession management and identification of potential, that's when you have a good calibration discussion where there's a, a debate raging about who, who do you want to invest in. But that takes a lot of energy, time, effort, and it, it can pull you down and it, it's not easy to go there. But we all can go there. We were like, especially those in the room here, you can all go there and go there many times. However, reality is that 80, 90% of the time, it's the other system that's at play. It's, it's the it's the intuitive decision making. You, we make rounding decisions. We just call the shot and say, "Hey, I like this person." It's you. It's the handshake. Oh, this person. Like, I, I, it feel good to interact with this person. And then, the reason why our brain, our brain evolved to to have those rounding decisions and those stereotype based decisions is that it's easier. It, it, just the, the quantity of mental resources to always be on top of our game and rational is tremendous. So we just need to live in a way where we can make those, those faster decisions. And that comes from experience, that comes from our upbringing, that comes from our, uh, our parents, uh, our, our, how people have coached us, influenced us. So the, the key point I wanted to make here is that biases are there and they're there to stay. Unconscious bias can be worked on by helping people build a framework for what are the biases? So I just want to maybe share a couple of examples here and then helping your leaders and individuals and your organizations build a framework for when you make a decision about who is worth investing in and who has more potential and, and how to approach it is to reduce the odds that these type of biases. I would strongly advocate for transparency in, in terms of those conversations. So uh, healthy debate, constructive dialogue, uh, building the skills for having those debates, if you're investing in people and you think someone has potential or a group of individuals has potential, by all means, tell them. 